Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. And as always, be sure to like and subscribe. So for today's video, I want to talk about how I navigated university. I know for a lot of people, um, entering into that phase of life is difficult. Um, you know, you're just wrapping up high school you know, where everything was kind of decided and chosen for you and you're now stepping into, you know, this bigger institution where, you know, you're, you're kind of on your own, you're kind of figuring everything out of, by yourself. And so I just want to give some tips and tricks as to how I navigated university, how I figured out um, first year and how I figured out what I wanted to do. So for me, I knew that I always wanted to work with children. I knew that I always wanted to be in a job where I was active, that I was not just staying in one place. I did not want a desk job at all. Um, I also knew that I wanted to be inspiring and encouraging and uplifting children and youth and being in a position where I could help them to better their lives in some way, form or shape. Um, I actually, fun fact, I actually applied to be a midwife um because at the time i didn't know what child and youth care was which is what i did in university um i applied to be a midwife but then i found out all the things that you need and it's actually a very competitive field and so um the university did write me back and say that i should reapply after completing one year of university in any um field and then write back and see if they would accept me then um but i I just I knew what my passion was and I knew I wanted to do a job that would align with my passion and with what I was happy with so that's how I knew what I wanted to do in university so for me I knew that I wanted to stay at home I didn't want to go anywhere that I had to board I didn't want to um, I just didn't want to go anywhere too far away so I just I knew that I wanted a university that was close enough to me so I went to Ryerson University which is an hour from where I live um, by public transit and so that for me was a huge thing I knew that it was um, a well-known and respected university um, it had great programs great program reviews and I really did enjoy my time there I had a lot of fun I enjoyed my professors, the people that I met, the projects that I were in, that I was involved with, English, um, but I did enjoy my time there. I enjoyed Ryerson. Um, I must say that I didn't make, you know, the most of my experience there in the four years. There's so much more that I could have done that I just, I didn't do, but it was still a great university and it gave me um, the, the university life experience that I personally wanted. As I said, I knew I didn't want to move away, so I didn't necessarily want that away from home growing up kind of situation happening at that stage in my life. And for me personally, I am very happy that I didn't move away because I had the support of my family. Um, I had you know, home cooked meals um, and I ended up saving a lot of money by staying at home. First year. Okay. I remember my first day of first year like it was yesterday so for those of you who don't know Ryerson University is in the middle of downtown Toronto right at Young and Dundas it's like it's literally interwoven into the city um, so you you get that city experience um, so huh, my first day I didn't know where any of my classes were I didn't know anything i was lost i was confused and i remember taking the train down and asking for directions and ending up all over downtown and then when i finally found out where my class was an hour had actually gone by already and i was like well i can't walk in late um on my first day because everyone's gonna be looking at me and i was just so overwhelmed and i stood right in young and dundas square and I cried because I felt so overwhelmed and disappointed in myself. Um, and the next day was better. I, I got to campus a lot earlier and, and try to figure it out. But my first, oh my gosh, it was it was so much. And I think 
the reason why I actually didn't go my go to my orientation because I was working that summer and I just I didn't have the availability to go also I didn't know how important orientation was so go to your orientations go to campus tours um, find out you know the best ways for you to learn about your school about your course says um, about the classrooms just learn as much as you can before your first day trust me it will help you a whole lot trust me um and so yeah that was my first day it was quite an experience my second day was better um yeah all right so first year first year for me was difficult i had a hard time transitioning into university lifestyle um i had a hard time adjusting to my classes my professors were amazing i'll say that my professors, my professors were amazing but i was just struggling with this whole independent learning lifestyle um and i mean i did do really well in my first year but it was still it didn't come as easy to me as when i moved here for high school which of course it wouldn't be because it's university but yes um it took me a while to adjust but once i kind of got into a rhythm a routine i i started you know growing and becoming a lot more comfortable i you know be, that's when i started to fall in love with the field that i was in in my first year you know in those introductory courses um one thing that i would say is that uh, I didn't because I didn't go to orientation I didn't know what courses to choose and so I ended up in all sorts of courses that I wasn't supposed to be and I was in first semester first year taking a four-year last semester course so and surprisingly I got like an A plus in that class but <laughs> it is not advised to do so so again go to orientation I can't stress that enough but first year was great um, one thing I would tell myself about first year if I was to you know go back um, is to slow down and enjoy every minute of it a little bit more and not rush through it or not want to rush through it as much as I did want to and to try to connect with people I didn't do that I didn't really try to make friends really I just went to class took my notes and then went home extracurriculars at university so that was another huge thing for me that was super different. You know, high school, it was very, you know, extracurriculars, English, um, <laughs> was just there. You know, I part I was a part of um, choir and um, Black History Club. I was a part of um, our library club. I know I was a little bit of a nerdish person. But yeah, I was I was very involved in high school. I got a lot of awards and recognitions because of my involvement in a lot of things in high school. And so when I went to university, it was just it was overwhelming and underwhelming at the same time. There was so much happening constantly on campus. Just just so many clubs, so many groups. But at the same time, I didn't feel like um clubs and groups were presented in such a way that it felt personal to me like oh if i go out feel like i'm a part of something and i think that was my fear because ryerson is huge there's thousands of, of people going there and i felt like you know clubs wouldn't be as personable and i would just go and get lost that is something that i wish i had done you know to just go to a club um some kind of extracurricular and to just see you know what it was about maybe connect with somebody ryerson didn't have a choir really they didn't really have a choir or like a glee club kind of situation um they just didn't have anything singing wise which i looked for but i never found um they had some karaoke nights and stuff but um it was usually in bars and stuff which wasn't really my scene so i just i really didn't get involved in any extracurricular and so that was kind of like one thing that I wish I had done, I also didn't go to a lot of events on campus. I don't think I went to any event actually. I would have maybe walked through the street events because they did a lot of street events. Um, but I never really took the time to go to anything. Now that I'm reflecting, I'm like, I really didn't do anything much in university. Um, and I think that just really is why I, I didn't make friends in university. I 
there is nobody that I met in university that right now I'm like, oh, I have their number in my phone. I would call them and text them to connect with them and see, you know, do you want to meet up? Like there was nobody there that I connected with like that. Um, and it kind of made my, my journey a little bit more on the lonely side. Um, and I wish I had kind of put myself out there more and made that effort to connect with people and to make friends, you know, and to not just focus on trying to get a 60 and above in all my classes. But I think that would have made my experience a little bit better if I had, you know, gone out of my way to make friends. Okay, textbooks. I had no idea textbooks could be so expensive. Um, and I know that even for my program, they were cheap in comparison to other people in other programs. And a lot of times I would wait until I got to my class to find out, you know, does this professor really use their textbook? Because I've had classes, especially in first year, I bought all the textbooks in first year. And then we just, we never use it or we'd use one page or they'd suggest a page, but then if you Google it, you would be able to find that page online. So your money just went down the drain because you didn't really need it. And then you're buying a book for a hundred something. And it's just such a waste, such a waste. So for me, I got into the habit of waiting until I was like three weeks into the class um, to see if this professor would actually use a textbook and if the textbook was going to be used enough so that I would justify the cost, the cost of the textbook. Um, another thing that was great is if you and a friend in the class you know, if you guys teamed up and went 50-50 on the textbook and then you guys could share it. Um, there were also like these discount bookstores. Um, there was one close to Ryerson that I, that I would always go to to check if they had my textbooks. Those are great. Usually a lot of times they would have like single leaf printout of textbooks um, at a discounted cost. Um, or buying secondhand textbooks from students who took the course before. I personally always found that to be a hassle because I had to find the person, meet up with them, and then if the book wasn't up to what I wanted it to be, it was awkward because I, I'm not a confrontational person, so I would want to be like, oh, I don't, I don't want this anymore. Um, so but typically for me, if I wanted a textbook, I would just go buy it um, at the set, at the um, discounted bookstore or just the Ryerson bookstore. But oh, another tip. Okay, this just came back to me look for your textbooks in the public library wherever you are for us it's toronto public library there are so many of my textbooks at the library that i could um take out on a loan and honestly it saved me so much money it saved me so much money <laughs> um and i no one has ever said that to me to check the the public library for the textbooks no one has ever suggested that and i think it's so genius so when you get your 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 list of books that you need check your public libraries also if you're a person who studies at your school's library they will often have a couple textbooks for each course um that you can borrow i don't think you can usually take them home but you can use them on site and then return them before you leave so that's also good if you don't want to buy textbooks and again i say just find out you know wait a little bit i know you're eager um and it's an exciting time to just go and get everything that you think you need but wait to see if your prof is actually going to use that textbook and you know just see if there are other places that you can access a textbook because the the cost of textbooks does add up and it can be very overwhelming in the long run so first year um, I put a lot of effort into what I was wearing for like the first semester, I'd say. First semester, yeah. I'd say first semester, I was very keen on what I was wearing and I tried to look really nice even when I didn't want to. And especially because my university was like smack in the middle of downtown, I was like, oh my gosh, I have to dress up. Um, because you know it's downtown Toronto, it's the, the culture of downtown. After that first semester, first year, I was just like, dang it, I'm going to wear what I want to wear. I'm going to be comfortable and I'm just going to go out there and do what I want to do, wear what I want to wear. Um, if I don't want to wear makeup, I ain't going to wear makeup. If I don't want to 
get all dressed up I after your first year first semester the hype dies down and you're just like ah, okay let me go to school mind you I had a lot of girls in my class who would dress up every day and have their makeup and hair done and come to class you know looking cute every day and you know I was just like oh I, I admire the fact that you can do that that you are willing to get up early just to to do that but I don't have that that stamina that willpower right now but I wish to be like you at one point in my life but I ain't there yet um, so don't feel pressure to go out there and buy a whole bunch of clothes and dress up every day and buy all the makeup and and put your face on every day um, yes feel good feel confident feel how you want to feel but just know that really and truly ain't nobody really watching you like that um so just be you be comfortable and and don't stress it too much don't okay student loan now i i can only talk about student loan in canada because that's what i know or in ontario specifically yes in ontario specifically i'm trying to remember if is Canada or for Ontario so um, I did do student loan um, just because education is expensive um, I didn't see really anything wrong with it I do have a plan and I have had a plan like right at the jump uh, mm -hmm. repayment plan um, that is something that I would advise you to do before you even get into it just figure out how am I going to pay this how long is it going to take me and what do I need to do when I finish school to ensure that I'm not falling behind on payments and not leaving myself in like super great debt? Um, for me, uh, something that I knew that I always wanted to do was I want to do my master's. Um, I just finished my undergrad and I want to ensure that I pay off my student loans for my undergrad before I jump into my master's. So this is why, again, Having a payment plan is super important for me because I don't want to be paying off the student loan for years and years and years and then doing my master's. I want to ensure that I am paying it off, paying it off as quickly as possible, and then jumping into my master's um, so that I'm not going into my master's to accumulate even more debt. So that's just what I have planned for myself and I see where it works. Uh, my older sister did it. Um, she set up a payment plan and she paid off her student loan I think in less than a year so it is possible it takes discipline um, it takes saying no to some things you know some vacations some going out to eat at night but it is actually like it's just great to know that I don't have this great debt like just hanging up here over my head um, so I would encourage suggest that is never good do not hold on to that do not accumulate a lot of debt and in instances where you have to try to pay it off as soon as you possibly can i hope this video is helpful for you i hope that you found something in there to to help you to navigate this time um if you have any questions or comments tips that you have um or ways in which you navigated your university or college experience let me know in the comments below if you have any questions that or if you want more information along the lines of this video let me know as well i would love to do more and as always you are beautiful you are loved and you are enough and i hope to see you in my next video